the banking life was quite a stressful life and uh, it was one thing my GP had always warned me that I was, uh, I can't remember how he described it, something like a time bomb ready to explode. He, he felt that, you know, provided I looked after myself and provided I kept the stress levels down to a minimum, I'd be okay. But there was always the concern that if something stressful happened, who knows, that might be the thing that tipped it over the top as such. And but the first real signs that something was wrong actually happened the day before. I got three sort of what I would call um, sharp pains right in the centre of my chest bone. But literally each time it happened, it was for what I would to maybe, I don't know, five, 10 seconds. But it was like somebody punched me. Um, and it sort of winded you, but then it went away. And you just, I just, I, I honestly thought at the time that it was indigestion or something like that. I got up the following morning, um, I went and got the paper. My wife went out for a ride on a bike. Uh, all of a sudden, that thing that I've had the day before was starting to come back, but wasn't going away this time. So as soon as my wife got back, she phoned 999. I would say within 10 minutes, one of the paramedics was there, I think, in the car. And then the ambulance arrived very shortly afterwards. My name's Mark Whitbread. I'm consultant paramedic for London Ambulance Service. We go to in excess of 80,000 emergency calls a year for adults with chest pain. I was working with another paramedic called Sonia. We've, we've arrived at the patient's address. We already had a first responder on scene. A lady answered the door and she just had this kind of look in her eye that something really wasn't quite right. And Paul gave a very good history um, in terms of his, of his symptoms and how he was feeling. And then we put him on the ambulance and, and did a 12 lead ECG and it was quite difficult with Paul because leaning him forward increased his pain. Because I was constantly being asked what sort of pain level are you in, I would have, I would have described it as say six or seven, but certainly no more than that. If it is a STEMI or an acute coronary syndrome, okay, so we will usually dispatch a motorbike, push bike, or a car because they're mobile to a chest pain while the computer system is looking for the nearest ambulance. We had to make a decision whether or not we, we, we took Paul a little bit further to take him to the cath lab or whether or not we were going to take him to the nearest. From my perspective, very familiar with taking your anterior, inferior, lateral MIs to the cath lab. That, that was a well embedded triage option that we'd had for many, many years. I looked at it from the perspective that on balance, everything in my education and training was telling me that it was the right thing for him. So I literally just thought, we'll take him if it's not right. I'm sure he's still in the right place. He was safe to travel the extra d distance at that time. So we train our EMTs and our paramedics to acquire an ECG that's including a V4R for a potential right ventricular infarct and a V8 for a potential posterior infarct and interpret the ECG and activate the cath lab and take the patient direct to the cath lab. But very quickly it became apparent that primary angioplasty was going to transform heart attack care in the UK but really London I think led the way and because of the London Ambulance Service, which is a pan-London service, it was able to bring together all of these centres which perhaps have been working in competition with each other. As, a, as an exemplar model for the rest of the UK, London Ambulance Service was able to demonstrate that it could be done. I now look back on the, the whole thing and think, well, actually, the heart attack could well have been the best thing that could have happened to me. Uh, I know this sounds mad, but it, um, it, it, to me, it is, because um, having the stents put in and everything else made life, um, I feel more confident going forward than I possibly would have done if I hadn't had the heart attack. I could have been abroad. I could have been anywhere. Um, so. Being at home on a Sunday morning and getting to the hospital very quickly from ha after having the heart attack, being treated very quickly, possibly made one hell of a difference to me and also my future life. Because as everybody keeps telling me, you know, the delay between having treatment after having the heart attack is, is very vital. The decision that the paramedics had made was absolutely the most important thing and they possibly 
could have saved my life.